Well, hello, everybody. This is uh, the infamous peanut farmer. I like peanuts, and this is Jimmy Carter. Uh, and this is a 10.2-5 te test for a fixed significance level, and we're going to do a confidence interval as well. Let's do board problem 53 first. It's kind of tricky. The mean age of a bus driver in Chicago is 53.4 years. If the hypothesis test uh, is performed, how should you interpret a decision, decision that rejects the null hypothesis? Okay, so A, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Now, we, we're looking for reject, the words reject. If we're going to reject the null hypothesis, then we don't want to support the claim. We want to reject it. So A is not in it. We want to reject. It could be B, uh, and let's see, C, let's see, that is sufficient. No, because it has the word support in there. And it could be D. Okay, so let's look at, at, at B and D. There is sufficient evidence to reject the claim. Uh, that your uh, your population mean is equal to 53.4 and that's the one that we want you guys not the one that's not sufficient we want to uh, have sufficient evidence to reject that claim and you'll see some more examples in this lesson as well all right so the answer is b okay so uh, test for fixed significance level and test for confidence intervals and then so uh, section a a fixed significance level z uh, test for a population so to test the null hypotheses whether the population mu that's what this is right here the population mean is equal to the sample mean based on an uh an srs of size n from a population with unknown uh population mu and known standard deviation um, uh, sigma uh first we got to do our z-score test right here okay and then we look at and then once we standardize that then we go to the table a in the front of the book sometimes uh, and then we reject HO at the significance level. And the significance level theta, that's what this is, it's a theta. It could be um, uh, it could be 5%, it could be 1%, it could be 2.5%. Uh, it just depends on what they say. So if it's a one-sided alternative test, you guys, then if it's greater than, it'll tell you, it'll basically say that they we're testing to see if it's greater than or if it's less than. So if your population, uh, your sample, um, uh, it, sample size is is less than your population that you're testing then you're going to do this one right here but if it's greater than then we're going to test greater than right here all right so whatever your sample comes up with and then so remember our z stars from table c in the back of the book so get your books out we're going to need these books get them out so we'll go and uh, you're going to need it here shortly so uh, if it's a two-sided one then it means it's not equal to so we're going to do the z star but your z star is going to be for both tails so positive z star on this side and the negative z star on that side so your book only gives you the positive. That's why we always do the absolute value right here. So it'll make more sense in a second. Okay, so note if it's two-sided and you're checking at the 5% level, then you got to take uh, that 0.05 and divide it by 2 right here because you're looking for both tails. Both those tails are going to be counting for your 5%. So you're going to look for your Z star for the 0.025. So pull out your books, open it up to the back cover, you guys. And then, so if it asks you at the 5% level, and you know it's going to be a two-sided, because they're just asking if it's not equal, then you take it and divide it by two, and then look at, the, at table C in the back of the book. And I think uh, all books now have table C. There might be one or two that don't. So if you don't, we're going to have to get, exchange that book right away, because you're going to need it for a while. So find a .025 at the top of uh, the back cover, okay? Mine's on the back cover. It's not, then it might be the second uh, page back. Okay, so 0.025 is in, in red, and you slide all the way down that column, and you look for your Z star, and it's the last black number down there. Way down, it says 1.960, so that's my Z star right there, okay? All right, so similarly, with a 1%, you take that and divide it by 2, and you get 0.005. So if you look up 0.005 and slide all the way down, you get a Z star that looks that. There should be a star right there, and a Z star right there. All right, let's go ahead and try some of this so then you just use those check off things that you just checked off okay so but if it's one sided then look for the the 05 and the 01 for those okay if it's two sided you got to divide it by two if it's one sided then you don't okay so back to the screen tensions okay so um, this is example 10.16 on 577 or 578 and 79 the manufacturer in example 10.5 uh, that we discussed earlier knows from careful study that the pr proper tension of mesh in a video terminal is 275 millivolts is there significant evidence at the 1% level that, the, that the, the population mu doesn't equal the 275? So they just don't want it to equal. And then they, they did a, a sample, a simple random sample of 20 uh, tensions that, that day. And I'll show you that in just a second, you guys. So yes, we've got to write this down. Step one, 
Identify the population of interest and the parameter you want to draw a conclusion about. State the hypotheses, plural, in words and in symbols. Okay? So we want to assess the evidence um, uh, against the claim that the mean tension of the population of all terminals produced that day is uh, 275. Okay, so we're going to um, and then state the hypotheses. And I just scrolled up so I had a little bit more room. The hypotheses are that the population mu does equal that 275, that the mean tension of the screens produced that day is 275. Remember, it's no change. It's always your null hypotheses. The alternative hypotheses, they just want to know, does it not equal? So does it not equal 275? So the mean tension of the screens produced that day is not 275 millivolts. All right, so choose the appropriate inference procedure and verify the conditions for using the selected procedure. Okay. So since the, um, uh, the standard deviation is known, which is usually not the case, you guys, we're going to use a one-sample z-test. When the standard deviation is not known, that's the next chapter. I think it's the next chapter. And then that's a t-test, you guys. Uh, but whenever it's given, whenever this is given, then it's a, a definite z-test, okay? And the conditions were already met, but I'm going to recall you guys with the conditions right here. Okay, here's that sample that we picked from. 20 numbers right there and then um, so we had to make sure that this uh, SRS came from a sample of the population so it did so the SRS of 20 screens came from the population of interest okay and the sample distribution was approximately normal so we showed a stem and leaf plot that showed that it showed a, a pretty good bell-shaped curve so it was approximately normal on that all right so step three if the conditions are met yes write this down carry out the inference procedure all right, so the one sample Z statistics is that formula right there. We're going to go ahead and plug them in. Recall from before that uh, the mean was 306.3, the standard deviation was 43, and the sample size was 20. So plugging those in, there you go, and you get 3.26. Okay, so that's my Z score that goes right here, that goes inside of there. So my it's the absolute value is 3.26. All right, so now what we're going to do is calculate at the 1% significance level. But since it's a two-tailor, because it's not equal to, I have to divide it by 2, so it's 0 0.005. So pick up your book again, go to table C, and then go look for uh, uh, 0.005, and then scroll down, and you find your z-score. Can you see it way down? It's the last black number on that column right there. You get 2.576. So since your 3.26 is greater than 2.576, that is statistically strong enough evidence to reject our HO. So our results are statistically significant to reject HO. Here we go. So step four, interpret your results in the context of the, pro uh, the problem. Yes, write that down. Okay, so we reject the null hypotheses at the 1% less significance level and conclude that the screen tensions for the day's production is not at the desired 275 millivolt level. All right, and then there's a picture right there. It just shows you that um, here's the 2.576 right here, and we got 3.26, and it was in this zone right here. It was not significant right here. So these guys were not significant on these two tails right here. All right, I'm sorry. They were significant enough to reject HO, your null hypotheses. They're significant enough to reject it if they're, they land in those tails right there. All right, so now we're going to calculate the 99% confidence interval of that same screen tension, okay? So we're going to plug those numbers in, and we get, uh, uh, there's my 99% confidence interval. Now, do you see 275 is not even in the 99% confidence interval, okay? So we can reject it from right there. So we uh, are 99% confidence that this interval captures the true population mean. All right, so since our hypothesis, uh, hypothesized population mean was 275 is not in that 99% confidence interval, we can conclude that our null hypothesis is implausible. It's not, it, it can't be 275. Thus, we conclude that it's different from, from 275. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. You can do it the way before. It just depends. If the book specifies which way, you have to do it that way. But if they just ask you, is it, uh, is it good or bad, then, then you can do the confidence interval or the prior way on top of that. All right, and then here's your homework right there.